Hey everyone and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to be doing a little bit of crafting stuff. I, being a music teacher, I have a lot of music and I need somewhere to put it. So my dad had this so I figured I would love to give it a little bit of an upgrade. I've never done something like this before but I figured why not. I really enjoy crafting and I really enjoy doing artsy types of things. This is a little bit different than that but I've been doing a lot of research so we'll see how it goes. This is not a a how-to video whatsoever just for the record I am just gonna be trying to follow directions that I was looking up online I read that first if you're doing something like this which is a laminate piece of furniture you start by sanding it super lightly with 100 to 150 grit sandpaper and you do it in circles so I'm gonna do that right now sanded everything down I need to take a cloth that's kind of like this and then this is TSP liquid substitute mixed with water and then I'm supposed to spray it over the entire thing and like wipe it down that gets all of the grime off of it and all the oils and stuff so that the paint will be able to stick better So I have sanded and I've wiped it down, now I'm going to start painting. This is the paint that I will be using, Krylon Fusion, all in one. It's a paint and primer. Hopefully it matches this because this is the color of our regular furniture. Think it'll do? So see this, this little like drippy thing? That's what you don't want. If you were looking at this for a tutorial, which you shouldn't be because I don't know what I'm doing. Thankfully, that part is on the back, so by the time I get to the front, I'll have the hang of this. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine, when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Hopefully this side goes better than the back. No word. So bad, oh my word. I'm like, girl, you could have at least looked up some tips before starting this. Like in all of your online research, did you forget to learn how to spray paint something? Well, that concludes day one. We'll see ya for day two very soon. Good morning. We are back for day two. We saw some of the progress that happened yesterday. There were a few issues that I had because I had put a garbage bag around the drawer 
so that it could keep all of the hardware and everything paintless. But we had some problems where the garbage bag would crumple up and then get stuck on the drawer. So here's what it looks like right now. I'm gonna sand that down and repaint it and also start working on the second drawer as well as give a totally new coat on the entire cabinet. Here we go. We're down to my last can of five. This is day four because in day two, I ran out of paint. Day three was pretty unproductive. However, I did sand down the entire piece of furniture so that I could get a really nice coat of paint on it. So I got more paint today and I've already put on a couple coats but I didn't have time to tape it. But now I do have time and so I'm gonna put the last couple of coats on the cabinet. So the answer may be, because this is a satin enamel, it's going to probably take a gloss or some other kind of paint and make it satin. It has been almost a week and a half since I have started this project. And I've really only been able to do a few days out of everything. And why you might ask, well, I was originally thinking, and maybe this is me just being an amateur, but I was thinking maybe it would take about three cans of paint to paint everything. And especially being a primer and a paint combined, but eight cans later, it was still not covering what I wanted it to do and things were getting like really weird. I even sanded the whole thing down, not taking off the paint, but smoothing it down and then trying to put another few coats of paint and it was still looking the same and my dad was trying some techniques on it. It just was not working. And so what I decided to do after I ran out of my eighth can of paint, was to get some more of a different brand, different kind of paint in general, just a regular paint. We'll see how that goes. Hopefully that will be a lot better. I bought eight cans of paint this time. <laughs> Hopefully it won't have a problem. Anyway, that's the lowdown. I don't know what day we're on, but we are we're gonna, we're gonna do this thing. Okay. This time, we got Rust-Oleum High Gloss. are these like super weird things happening to the paint and I don't know what that is. It's like freaking me out. Not a fan. And we're almost out of our first can. But I was expecting that. All these bugs keep flying into the paint. Look at him. Like this kind of paint also feels a lot stickier. Like if the other paint had gotten on me, I never felt it, but I feel this all over my arms. Bug count time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Continuing on. Now I'm gonna wait for a while, I'm gonna let it dry. Maybe go for a walk, cause it's beautiful out. And I'll see you guys soon. We've had a couple of issues with the cabinet. So, so basically what happened was, once you had it on the dolly that we were using to roll in and out, it was putting pressure on the bottom panel right here. 
And when this door was open, it was pushing it up into there. As you can see, it's cracked right here. And this side is actually starting to do that as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some L-bracket here and there, just to reinforce both sides. So I have my brother here with me today. He's really sweet and is gonna help fix it for me. I have to go teach piano lessons right now, so this is gonna be the Jordan Show. All right, anyway, enjoy this segment. We're gonna put marks on there for exactly where we want the tools. So there's no question as to where they go. We're gonna move the L bracket off. So since we are drilling directly into wood, I'm gonna get a drill bit and do a couple pilot holes. Making sure that I don't go all the way through. Pro tip when you're doing this sort of thing, in order to make sure that you don't drill too far into the thing you're trying to drill into, you get your drill bit and you get your screw that you're trying to screw in. Take a piece of tape, you want to measure how far the screw matches up to the drill bit. And then what you do is you take the tape, just a little piece, now you put the screw back onto the drill bit like I had it before, put a little piece of tape right towards the end of it, so then you know exactly where you want to stop drilling. that the holes are drilled. I think I'm gonna start with this screwdriver, then use that to use the drill to go the rest of the way. Where did I put this screw? There it is. Now one thing you want to do when you're screwing in multiple screws is you don't want to have them completely tight until you get all four of them in, or as many as you're actually doing, because then that gives you some wiggle room a little bit to move it around if the part you're screwing in is not exact. That could have gone a lot worse. All right, first one is on. Now, repeat the same process on the other side to just screw everything in. I'm sweating like crazy. It's not even that hot out here. That's cool. There we go. We are all done. All right, huge, huge thanks to my sister Jacqueline for allowing me to be a part of her video. You guys, she is the greatest sister ever. No, she did not ask me to do this part. I'm just doing it on my own. She rocks. She's been working so hard on this project. I just encourage all of you guys to just hit that like button. Just show some support and give her a ton of those likes. Subscribe. That concludes my part of the vlog, I guess. We have another day and there was another problem. What I should have done when I had a paint and primer mix and I switched to the new paint that I got, I really should have lightly sanded the whole thing down because the paint and primer mix was causing a slight reaction so that there were all of these gritty parts and that's why I switched paints. So when I added the new paint, it ended up just being as rough as the last time and not having a smooth coat. So I need to sand down the whole thing again, which is awesome. But that's what you get for really not knowing what you're doing and trying something new and that's okay so today I probably won't be painting because it's pretty windy and the wind is changing constantly which isn't very good for spray painting I'll just probably sand the whole thing down today Hi. I feel like I keep running into problems. When I first started this, I thought it would take like a week. And maybe that's just me being new at this and I should always make room for the worst. But in this case, after I sanded it down the other day, it was so windy, like I could not paint. And then yesterday we had an issue where it was very overcast and it looked like it could rain at any second. Now it's overcast today, but I think I'm gonna take the chance because it doesn't look as bad as yesterday. And I'm really gonna see if I can get a good couple coats on it today. However, I know I've been showing a lot of footage of me spray painting, so I'm just gonna go for now, paint some stuff, and then show you what it looks like afterwards. The paint's pretty wet right now, so it's kind of glossy and everything, but not too shabby. Before, you could see that there were a lot of blotchy parts where the coat was super uneven. And you can see that a little bit because it's drying right now. When I first painted the top of this, it was really, really smooth. And now that it's been drying, it's a little blotchy, but overall I'm pretty encouraged by how it looks. This is the last can. So I was spray painting and these guys just came up and started hanging out in the yard, like eating stuff. They were right by me earlier, it was crazy. Okay, I think that's it. I did as clean of a coat as I possibly could 
on all the sides that I needed to. Um, as far as I can see, they look pretty good. They don't look perfect, um, but I did, really, I did everything that I could to get it as smooth as possible. So we'll see how it dries. Here's how it looks. We got some bugs stuck to the top, which is annoying. They unfortunately decided to land there. Here's the side. I know you can't really see it super well because of the shadow, but it's pretty good. Here's the side. The drawer I feel like was the messiest, but I literally tried so many things and I cannot, cannot get it any better. If this is how it dries, I would be pretty happy with it. Today we're putting the drawer pulls on the cabinet. So I have my dad here to help me because like I said, I don't really know what I'm doing very much. So he is here to help me so we can get this on and get it on as perfectly as possible. Kind of like position mm -hmm. where you think what those to kind of be. Okay. been a journey it is now the middle of October I started this project at the very end of April like I said in the transition right before this part uh, things were crazy and shortly after I finished the cabinet we moved it into my fiance's apartment and then I went up to Michigan to finish planning our wedding which was supposed to be in June and then we got it all moved to the end of August because COVID-19 so that's really cool but that being said it took a lot longer for me to finish this video than what I wanted it to I was hoping to have like a two to three week turnaround time on this baby but that is not what happened so here we are the cabinet was actually done prior to me leaving for Michigan but I haven't been able to take pictures and really finish everything up with final commentary until now all right, so final thoughts of this video. Did I learn anything? Would I have done anything differently? Did I like it? Would I do it again? Yes, I really enjoyed the project. It was actually a really great opportunity. I learned a ton that I wouldn't have been able to learn if I hadn't just jumped in with it. There were definitely some dumb mistakes and some really stupid assumptions <laughs> like that I thought I would be able to get done with it in like a week and in three cans of paint that's just crazy every single tutorial that i was looking at was in like time lapse so it makes sense that i maybe thought that it would be a little bit faster of a process than it really was for example when all the paint was just being really really strange you couldn't have guessed that it was supposed to fuse to every single surface but it just didn't work <laughs> and it was causing a weird reaction it just wasn't good i was really frustrated a lot of times because i thought that it was going to be a lot easier now some stuff that i learned that i would do differently next time is I would have just used either a roller brush or a paintbrush to paint the whole thing. I just, I didn't want to have paint strokes of any sort. I didn't want to have to deal with the texture that comes from a rolly brush, but at the same time, I got a whole different texture from using spray paint. It may have been smoother if I would have just used a brush of some sort. It took way longer to do it with spray paint because I had to wait for it to dry and then it wouldn't cover it in certain areas and I had to go over the whole thing or the whole surface again. I just figure now that 
a paintbrush of sorts would have been so much faster and so much easier than using spray paint. It just did not work out super well. I mean, it looks great now. I'm so thrilled with it. It looks amazing. But at the same time, it just, it took 26 days, right? Holy cow. Granted, there were a few days in there where I couldn't do anything because of the weather and I don't have my own space. If I would have had my own place to paint with a rolling brush, uh, I could have technically done it inside. I've seen a lot of people do stuff like that inside, but I do think you have to take a lot of extra precaution to make sure that it doesn't get on your other furniture. Of course, using spray paint, I have to be outside. I don't have any type of special equipment. I don't have any special room or whatever to do that in. So that's just the way that it was. Would I do it again? I wouldn't do the exact same thing again where I spray paint an object unless it's small, but I would absolutely redo furniture again. That thrills me. I love finding either things you already have around your house or things that you can find for really cheap at any type of thrift store and being able to just turn it around and make it into something that's really desirable and very pretty and also something that you can be proud of because you're like, yeah, I did this. So then it's really fun because like my piano students come in and I show them all my music that's in there now and it's like, yeah, I actually redid this cabinet and they're like, no way, that's so cool. And it's like, I'm really proud of that work. I think it ended up looking really, really good. So I do have some other things in mind that already exist that I own that I would like to redo actually painting them with a paintbrush. This was just an amazing opportunity to paint something and redo it. I am going to use that cabinet probably forever now. I think it looks so much better than the original and I'm so happy of the way that it just brightens up my space and makes it look completely different than it would have any other way. In Florida, it's pretty warm still, but you're starting to feel the humidity go away and even though it's still 88 degrees in the middle of October, it's still starting to feel a little bit like fall. So tune in next time for me to decorate my home to make it fall. Subtly, subtle fall. I like subtle fall, I don't like crazy. It is definitely fall type of look. Alright, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye!